and the Your Excellency President Uhura Kenyatta of Kenya. And thank you for your strong leadership and commitment uh, to uh, lead not only your country, Kenya, but also Africa with a strong commitment to fight against the climate change. And I'd like to also uh, commend the leadership of uh, CEO Dr. Patrick Faircoyen for his um, very inspiring speech and strong commitment for his leadership. And I'm also uh, very happy to be uh, with uh, the leaders of um, uh, World Bank uh, and IMF and also uh, African Development Bank, World Trading uh, Organizations, and also UNFCCC. And I'm very happy to work with all these global leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Back in 2007, that was the first year as the Secretary General. I was the first Secretary General of the United Nations to visit Antarctica. In a small plane, I flew over melting ice fields. I could see vast chunks of ice the size of six-story buildings breaking away from ice shelves. Then I continued to visit the Arctic four times. The power of nature was impressive and extraordinarily beautiful. But the journey was deeply disturbing and because it was a proof climate change was accelerating faster than we thought. I had sent out strong, strongest possible messages to the people of the world and particularly leaders of the world that climate change was happening much, much faster than we have thought. And here I am, 14 years later, and what is happening now is worse than I could have ever imagined, particularly for those living on the front lines on the African continent. And we have no one but ourselves to blame. The recent IPCC report affirms that again, the human influence is to blame and some forms of climate disruption have now been locked in for centuries. We have no choice but to act and adapt, act to cut carbon emissions as fast as we can to reduce the burden on adaptation and adapt to growing climate impact that we being experienced the world over, to secure people's lives and livelihoods, to secure a climate resilient future for everyone. We have just less than a week to go until COP26 in Glasgow. The time for talk is over and truly over. We have to deliver on the promises of Paris climate change agreement where we are failing. This means, first, there must be delivery of $100 billion in climate finance, as Dr. Fair Cohen has just mentioned for every year from 2020 until 2025 at least, with a parity between mitigation and adaptation. If there is to be any confidence and trust in global cooperation to address the climate emergency, I'm urging that there should be 50 to 50% allocations of financial support for mitigation and adaptation. Second, we must have every country aligning their ambition upwards towards 1.5 degrees, a limit beyond which we cannot allow the Earth to go. Three, we must bring adaptation to climate change onto a level footing with emission cuts. The climate emergency is already all around us and no one is safe. COVID-19 has taught us that we are only as strong as our weakest link. That is why 
international airport must be global. Everyone, every nation, every boardroom, every courthouse, every dinner table, every schoolyard can and must contribute to the solution. It is nothing short of the biggest talent of our time, but we can do it. Adaptation will take on many shapes and forms all over this globe. As a new international organization, the Global Center on Adaptation, GCA, with Dr. Patrick Fiercoyen and Issa Helm, is a key resource for adapting our world. The state and trend in adaptation 2021 Africa report published by the GCA is the most comprehensive adaptation report on Africa where adaptation is most needed. This report does not just present a gloomy picture of the future, but it identifies opportunities to invest in adaptation across all key economic sectors, as well as the positive returns on such investment to speed up the achievement of the SDGs in Africa. The Africa-led and Africa-owned Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program, AAAP, jointly developed by the GCA and the African Development Bank, is an opportunity to realize this ambition, delivering a resilient and prosperous future for Africa, as called for by all African leaders. The AAAP, as Africa's plan, seeks to mobilize $25 billion in five years to deliver action on four bold ideas that will upscale and accelerate adaptation on the front. First, digital agriculture resilient. Second, resilient infrastructure. Third, youth employment and entrepreneurship. And fourth, innovative finance. And of course, $25 billion over five years is a drop in the ocean compared to the challenges Africa faces, but it is the floor, not the ceiling, for adaptation finance. The African Development Bank has already committed $12.5 billion of this money. Our goal is to raise the remaining $12.5 billion as a new and additional finance between now and COP27 split midway. As called by, by President Shisekedi of Democratic Republic of Congo, in his capacity as African Union leader, all partners need to come to Glasgow to commit to AAAP as its aims are realistic, necessary, and achievable. This is Africa's ask. This is Africa's imperative. Now the international community must respond to that. Therefore, to support the African continent in its transition towards a green, resilient recovery, I call on all leaders and development partners to capitalize AAAP upstream financing facility with 250 million euros over five years at COP26 next week in Glasgow. These resources are essential to unlock the billions of, to shift the trillions on the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, I also strongly support the leadership of African Development Bank to establish AAAP investment facility to finance the scale up and acceleration of adaptation on the African continent. The facility will be key vehicle to channel part of the $100 billion annually meant for adaptation and resilience building in Africa in the years to come. Here today, 
I would like to emphasize that we are starting a new chapter for Africa, an opportunity for the continent to build forward better and build greener. But for Africa to turn its plan into reality, Glasgow has to deliver on adaptation for the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, let us do it together. Only together can we thrive and prosper. Thank you very much for your leadership and attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General, for your